Hi there, my name is Jeffrey Venture, and this is my D&Dified series, where I take all your favorite TV shows, movies, and other popular media, and turn them into Dungeons & Dragons adventures. Today, I am very excited to be doing my first subscriber-requested video, which is covering How to Train Your Dragon. Thank you so much, subscriber Topaz the Dragon. This one goes out to you. Especially since I hope that this inspires more of you to leave a comment below with your request for a TV show or movie that you would really like to see get the D&D Affiat treatment, you should know that I lean heavily towards content that is either completely or mostly uncovered by the tabletop role-playing game community. While Tatooine and Mordor have been thoroughly explored in tabletop role-playing games, often with the game systems fully built to accompany them, the Isle of Burke has not, and I seek these lands uncharted for the videos that I include in this series. How to Train Your Dragon is just plain fun, and the story of Hiccup, his friends, his enemies, and of course the dragons themselves offers us a really exciting opportunity to take on the mantle of dragon riders. Heck yes, my friends, I will be going over how you, the party, can each have a dragon of your own to ride into battle for this adventure. All right, dragon riders, with all that out of the way, let's jump right in and d and how to train your dragon. Standard disclaimer, spoilers ahead. Though if you haven't gotten around to watching movies two or three yet, the spoilers should be exceptionally light. Unlike our Frozen 2 video, I'm not making this one specific to any one of the How to Train Your Dragon movies because it can kind of be dropped in wherever in the timeline that's presented to us. Those things are, and I don't think this even really counts as a spoiler, that humans and dragons don't always get along. So if you want to watch this video and haven't gotten around to watching movie 2 or 3 yet, I wouldn't worry about it. You should be just fine. Sorry in advance to you super fans who have also read the comic books, watched the TV shows, seen the short films, and everything else because, wow, there is a lot. Uh, I will not be covering any of the additional lore or information presented by these sources. Okay, so let's get this adventure building show on the road, shall we? Theme and adventure ideas. Respect for nature, specifically as that pertains to respecting the natural order of the dragons on the Isle of Burke and beyond, seems to be a huge part of the movie series. That theme drives forward our aforementioned, not even really a spoiler, conflict between humans and dragons, since humans just can't seem to respect the dragons doing their thing. The fact that the conflict exists is what we're going to use to establish the theme for the adventure, our characters' motivations, and some things about the monsters and challenges that we end up facing, and we don't even have to talk about who this guy or this guy is to establish our adversaries. It's just humans, who are either scared of or planning to take advantage of the dragons and thus pose a threat to the dragons themselves as well as our dragon riders, and henceforth I shall be referring to them simply as trappers. So we're establishing that you dragon riders are going to have a run-in with some trappers. Does that mean that they're going to ambush you while you're out on a leisurely ride, or are you going to take the fight to them after hearing that they have kidnapped a dragon friend of yours? Maybe you've intercepted a missive that tells of an impending raid from these, from these dragon trappers, and you're preparing to defend yourselves on the Isle of Burke. Personally, I like the rescue mission idea, so I'm going with that one. As always, if one of the other options or something else entirely strikes your fancy, then go forward with that. And I hope that the options presented in the player characters as well as the monsters and challenges section uh, help inform the adventure that you end up building. So I picture this being a relatively heavy combat and strategy focused adventure with us infiltrating the trapper base and messing up some baddies with our dragons. We may start it off as a stealth mission, especially if there's something like ballistas or net launchers to dissuade us from going in guns blazing, but we eventually want to have some aerial combat, and I would personally choose to have those happen in environments where the dragons that have uh, water-based abilities and land-based abilities can excel as well. We put a big bad evil guy in at the end, maybe with a big and nasty and powerful dragon of his own, and then after defeating him, we ride off into the sunset with our rescued dragon friend. Sounds like fun to me. So let's start talking about the really fun part of this adventure, which is the dragon riders that we make and the dragons that they ride. Player characters. 
We'll start by saying that the fun part of our character creation, by comparison to some of our other adventures, is not going to be on the dragon riders as much as on the dragons themselves. I'm committing to creating more homebrew content for this video than I would uh, for my other videos, especially before figuring out if this is going to be the uh, D&Dified adventure module that we end up creating at the end of the month, because I think this adventure hinges on having some usable dragons for our dragon riders to, uh, to ride throughout this adventure. You'll find all three of my homebrew how to train your dragon dragons in the description down below. But yeah, not even the homebrew section of D&D uh, &D Beyond was able to help me out here because while there are Night Furies and Deadly Natters and stuff like that, uh, they're all set to CR 16, 17, and there was even a CR 30 in there, and that's way beyond the power level that we need for this adventure. Anyway, you should know that the homebrew dragons that I created were designed very specifically and very closely to the uh, wormling dragons that we see for the many dragon varieties in the monster manual. Those of CR2 anyway. Freaking uh, red dragon wormlings putting the rest to shame at CR4. So if you're looking for a base model that matches the power level of the dragons that I presented in the homebrew there, uh, you can use any of the stat blocks for the CR2 wormlings in the monster manual, and you can make uh, maybe some minor tweaks while balancing them, of course, um, to create something a bit more unique to match the dragon that you have in mind. But in either case, I also made them size large so that we could ride these dragons. If you want to get really crazy in uh, making sure that your dragon feels really, really close to the one that you want to model from the, the films or other materials, uh, you can try adding a character class to the uh, the stat block for for the dragon. It's it's something that um, the dungeon masters have done in the background before, and I'd very much recommend you work with your dungeon master if that's something that you and your table end up deciding to do, but it can help add that extra little unique element that really makes that dragon feel as close as possible to what you're trying to recreate. Now, of course, Four to six players and their four to six dragon wormlings, especially if those wormlings have a character class, are going to tip the scales of power very much in favor of the players. But when we get to the monsters and challenges section, I'll touch on how we can tip those scales a little bit back in the other direction so that it doesn't feel like you're just wiping the floor with the monsters and challenges that you face. For now, what we've got to know is that our characters need to be able to hang in the fight there too. And thus I am recommending that you set your characters to level three so that they can perhaps tank a hit that was intended for their dragon without dropping from full hit points to dead. These characters are also going to be very straightforward in their creation because, as far as I'm aware, there are no spellcasters in the mythos. Which is fine with me, honestly, because again, I want this adventure to focus more on the dragons. So here's what we've got. You're all human, you can pick from fighter, barbarian, maybe rogue, and maybe ranger. And that's it. At level 3 we've got some options to diversify amongst ourselves, but yeah going to be pretty vanilla in terms of character creation if we're trying to stick pretty close to the reference material. All right, so let's plot the trajectory for our dragon riders in this adventure. Structuring our adventure. Dragon rescue mission is a go! Our adventure prompt will establish that we have trappers as adversaries, that they have a base of operations of some sort, and that they have our dragon friend captive. I know I skipped over the part where we decide specifically which dragon friend we are going to rescue in this circumstance, but that should honestly be a pretty easy choice. And if you dungeon masters are deciding to pick one of the named dragons, not species names, the ones that get specific names, from the films, then I think all you need to do is establish the uh, the justification for it in the adventure prompt you end up creating. Go save Toothless if you want, just have a good story reason for it. We start our adventure just outside the trapper base where I would like to have a low threat encounter to kick us off, either with some scouts that perhaps are flying around on dragons of their own, or with guards that are posted at one of the entrances that we need to infiltrate to get in. The guard encounter should lean a bit more heavily towards stealth as we perhaps distract the guards and sneak past, whereas the scouting party one should lean towards combat with needing to incapacitate the scouts before they're able to head back to the base and alert everyone that you're here. I think the threat of alerting the trappers as a consistent threat throughout this entire counter is super fun, and I would plan a contingency to throw a bunch of low-level threats at the party um, as the uh, base becomes aware of their presence um, that they either need to incapacitate or outmaneuver. This is an adventure where a map of the building itself is going to be super important, um, and in the rooms that we find on this map we can find things like items, information, or NPCs that are going to help propel us towards that final dragon cage where our BBEG will be lying in wait. 
Maybe one room has a map to the facility, where another one has a human prisoner that you can free and get information from or have them help you in uh, freeing your dragon friend. Maybe another one has the key to the dragon cage that you will need. Um, and then inevitably, there's going to be at least a room or two that has trappers that will attack you on sight. It's also important to consider that we'll almost certainly have our dragons with us th throughout this whole adventure. So wide and tall hallways are going to be super important. Maybe just even make them open air rooms so that our dragons can be of benefit to us rather than a hindrance to us as we go through this adventure. We work our way through the base, make our way to the dragon cage at the end, and then the BBEG shows up blocking our way to the cage. Maybe he gets a little monologue if you can squeeze it in. Uh, and then he'll inevitably, of course, attack the party with his powerful dragon, perhaps some minions as well, and the party can attempt to set free their dragon friend in the middle of this encounter. With the BBEG defeated, the Dragon Riders take to the skies with their rescued dragon friend, and we ride off into the sunset. Remember that we want to create some opportunities for our dragons that have some special skills uh, with a swim speed, a burrow speed, or even dark vision, and any number of other traits that you want to pull on, uh, to allow them to shine. So including things like a small docking bay with some water, um, or even just some dark rooms to play on that dark vision uh, can allow those dragons to shine. But yeah, that seems like a pretty solid trek through our trapper base, so let's uh, fill her up with baddies. Monsters and challenges. As mentioned earlier, the players are going to have quite a bit of power on their side, so you don't need to hold back too much, DM. Throw a bunch of enemies at us. We're mostly going to be looking for non-magically inclined humanoids in the monster manual to fill up our trapper base, although I think some trapper-controlled dragons would be an interesting touch as well. More on that in a second. I think thugs, as they are presented in the monster manual, are going to be the perfect power level for our run-of-the-mill baddies that are just walking about this base. And I would sprinkle in veterans, knights, and bandit captains uh, for any of the NPCs that you want to give just a little bit more power. As mentioned earlier, you may want to work in some ballistas or net launchers, and while there is a full stat block for ballistas on page 255 of your Dungeon Master's Guide, I couldn't find a net launcher in that book or any other. Easy enough to tweak the ballista to make a net launcher, just reduce or in fact maybe eliminate the damage dealt by the net launcher, and then uh, impose a strength saving throw for the dragon uh, so as to not fall prone while in midair. Oof, that might hurt a lot. Excellent. If our party has some bad luck in the course of the adventure, they may be a little overwhelmed if our BBEG has the uh, gladiator stat block, but otherwise that should be just fine. Um, and I would then plop that BBEG onto a big nasty dragon. If they're looking kind of rough, you may want to lean back on the veteran, knight, and bandit captain stat blocks, but hey, you may be cool with killing your players, in which case, more power to you. Just kidding, kind of. Anyway, trapper control dragons. The CR3 and CR4 dragons from the monster manual are probably pretty good fits for these trapper control dragons, but remember first that these dragons are most likely fighting against their will, and that the characters most likely have a motivation to uh, not kill these dragons, and in fact, maybe not even harm them at all. So uh, I'm not saying that they can have another dragon to help in this adventure, but I'm also not not saying that. For our final BBEG controlled dragon, I'd like to mix it up a little bit and emphasize the dangerous and perhaps even wicked nature of this dragon uh, by using a wyvern as a stand-in for the death gripper dragon that we see from the films. You can give your death gripper a breath weapon if you want to even more closely match what you see in the films, but they're pretty solid as is, so you should be fine. And finally, our dragon friend. Let's just make the dragon friend super powerful, so in the event that the party can free the dragon in the course of the combat, uh, it's really just a matter of defeating the BBEG before they're able to take out any of your party members. I'm thinking maybe a young red dragon or a young gold dragon because they're at the top of their food chain in their respective chromatic and metallic categories, as well as being the top tier in their uh, young dragon category. I'd say pick one of those two based on the breath weapon and other stats that you'd like your dragon friend to have. All right, so challenges. And I think these are going to be relatively light uh, because sneaking around the base or, you know, rushing in if you raise the alarm is going to be challenge enough. You can put some traps with net launchers or a sleepy dragon gas uh, if you'd like, but we've really got enough on our plate so far. Yeah, this adventure is feeling pretty complete. So let's wrap it all up with an adventure prompt. I usually include an adventure prompt contained within an adventure handout for my one-shot players, which includes things like character starting level, 
race and class options, uh, gold allowance for armor and weapons and such, magic item allowance, though that almost certainly won't make sense for this adventure, and a few other parameters for character creation. You could justify a small list of magic items for uh, really well crafted but still mundane items as is sometimes established for plus one weapons, mithril armor, and stuff like that, but that's of course up to you. I suppose there's also room to justify some non-magical artificer type stuff based on the fire sword thingy that Hiccup has, but again, I wouldn't overthink it. Uh, I think the focus should really be on the dragons here. Anyway, here's the adventure prompt that I would give to my one-shot players. You are a band of adventurers, dragon riders of Burke, and capable explorers in your own right, each with a dragon of your own that you can ride into battle. On a recent flight of leisure, your chief, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, lost his prized dragon Toothless to a band of wicked and greedy dragon trappers, only barely escaping with his life. Left bedridden due to his injuries, Hiccup is in no state to save his dragon, and you fear that the trappers will soon sail away with their grand prize. You have taken it upon yourself to bring the fight to them and infiltrate the trapper base to save Toothless. We shall see just how well you've trained your dragon in this one shot based on how to train your dragon. That's the end of the adventure prompt. All right, big thanks again to Topaz the Dragon. This one was actually really, really fun to make, so thank you for the suggestion. As always, I hope that this got you players excited and you DMs inspired to go out and run a one-shot based on this super cool and well-built-out world that has way more dragons than I realized when I first started putting this video together. That was How to Train Your Dragon, d and Deified. I'd love to hear what you think about running or playing a game like this in the comment section down below, where I'd also like to hear if you have any video topics to request for one of my next adventures in this series. Send this to your game master, and as always, please send me stories and pictures if you end up running this at your own table. I'm a new creator here on YouTube, which means that every like and comment helps get this out to an even broader audience, so if you feel that I've earned it, a quick like on the video would be super appreciated, and a comment even saying uh, just which dragon you'd like to ride in this one shot would be super cool. And of course, I'd love it if you could go right down there and hit that subscribe button if you like what I'm doing here and don't want to miss any of these weekly videos. I've been sharing more homebrew content lately. Yay, me! Mostly to go along with these videos, but free content nonetheless. And I've been sharing them on my uh, Instagram and Twitter, where you can follow me if you don't want to miss updates for the videos that I put out, uh, more homebrew content, and of course the OC d, d memes that I've been putting out that I think are pretty funny. Not to brag, but I posted one of the last ones to Reddit too, and it got over 14,000 upvotes. <laughs> but that, that's all I got for you. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy adventuring.